Is the mental health agenda nefarious and evil? Are we officially in the age of Aquarius? What up everybody? Esoteric Eddie here. Namaste. Today we're going to kick back and just kind of analyze this whole mental health movement and what it might mean for the age of Aquarius which we are apparently in or at least um, are in the beginning stages of transitioning into. And this is kind of a random video actually. I wasn't planning on making this video but um, I was driving around earlier and listening to this podcast about addiction and trauma and something kind of just dawned on me. I had a realization about mental health in the world and it was just, it was amazing. And so I wanted to share that with y'all to see what you think. Um, before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Happy New Year, if I haven't said that to you already. And just want to say that, um, of course, I'm always working and attempting to bring you amazing content. And I've got huge plans for this year. And so, um, yeah, just thank you to everybody for rocking with me. So let's just kind of get into it. What we're going to do is we're going to briefly watch a clip from the podcast that I was watching. Um, and I, I was watching a, a video uh, from the Doug Pops, if I'm saying that correctly, podcast and in this particular episode he was interviewing Gabor Mate or Mat yeah Gabor Mate I'm sure you've all seen him or or, or of of uh heard of him he's kind of you know he's he's pretty famous on social media and famous with, within his field he's um a world renowned physician and I would say psychologist um and and also vocal very vocal about politics and just a very wise and um intellectual man you know uh, so in this clip that we're going to see he's talking about uh, trauma and he believes that the core issue that causes addiction is basically trauma is basically um, <clears throat> a wound in our early life that we later as adults try to remedy and I've been listening to a lot of stuff like this lately because um, I'm going through a lot of changes in my life. And it's something that I will talk about more as, as time passes um, because I'm not really in a space yet that I want to fully disclose what I'm going through. But basically, I'm in the process of recovery. And so I appreciate listening to a lot of stuff like this. And educating myself on addiction and traumas, the body and mind, and how to really tap into the body and mind to, to heal ourselves so that we can heal the world. And um, so, yeah, I, had, I was listening to this and I had this realization about the world, about humans, about our connection to God and how we are still evolving as a human family. So again, going back to this clip I'm about to play... Um, Gabor Mate, the psychological latte, believes that trauma is the main cause of addiction. And it makes sense because most of us go to substances because we're lacking something or we feel like we need something, whether that's to relax, whether that's to go out and socialize you know, whatever it is, we go to substances because we feel like we need something, which means we are lacking something. And that lack comes from a wound, a trauma, somewhere along the line of our life. And to me, trauma is basically a breakage that occurs or occurred during the developmental years of a human. And during those developmental years when we undergo a trauma, a breakage in our growing, in our in, in that growing process, now the body, the brain, the mind, the soul does not grow correctly. Now it now has a schism. And so it will forever have to remedy that schism, right? Like what we go through in life doesn't ever go away. We just learn how to remedy it. And for many of us, we remedy that trauma, that breakage, uh, with 
substances, addictive substances. And that's why they're addictive, because they work. They work, but that temporary fix has long-term effects, detrimental effects. And so I'm going to play this clip, and this particular clip has to do with children, with babies, because the realization I had has to do with how we are raising our kids. And it has to do with the fact that the world is basically split into two opinions. The first opinion being that, you know, we're raising our kids too soft. And I'm going to dive a little bit more into what I think about this. And the other opinion is that um, we've been raising our kids too harshly. And so there, there, there's a split, you know, there's this debate going on in the wider world about how do we raise our kids. And I think the most important thing is, um, you know, what do we want our kids to grow up to be? You know, I think that's the more important question is like, who do we want to raise? If we if we start to ask ourselves, who is it that we want to raise? Who do we want these, ki- these children to grow up to be? That will kind of give us our answer, right? Um, but anyways, I'm going to play this clip. And that's going to set the basis for the for what I'm going to talk about, which is basically, again, this whole mental health movement, you know, that's that's been growing. You know, why is it growing? Where is that coming from? The mental health movement, what that has to do with the age of Aquarius that we're going into and how we should be raising our babies and how we should be thinking about that. So, anyways, kick back, relax, yo. I'm about to play this clip. All right, check it out. Shit it in the room. So you have to start with pregnant women and say, what are the stresses in your life? What's your relationship like? How much support are you getting? Because you want to create a peaceful environment in the room for that infant already. The second thing I say to parents is work on your own issues. Because any traumas that you haven't worked out in yourself almost inevitably, you're going to pass it on to your kids, like I did. These things that I'm talking about now, I didn't know them when I was a young parent. And there were significant traumas that my wife had, that I had, that we haven't even realized yet. So that it's almost inevitable that parents who are not conscious will pass on their traumas to their kids. So work on your own issues. Really important. Number three, children have certain needs. In my new book, The Myth of Normal, I have a chapter on the irreducible needs of children. Those needs include unconditional loving acceptance, the capacity to experience all their emotions, whether they're anger or joy or pain. Those emotions need to be received. In other words, the question you have to start off with as a parent is, what are the needs that my children have for health development? Both in this book, The Myth of Normal, and in a previous parenting book I wrote called Hold On To Your Kids, you have to start off not with what do we want our kids to be or how do we want them to behave, but what are their needs for healthy development. And in this modern society, parents are really challenged to meet those needs. That makes a lot of sense, and I think... Wow, okay. Well, let's break down what he said. And first of all, I stand corrected right there. So I said a moment ago, we need to... Start with who do we, who do we want our children to be, and of course Gabor Mate, the psychological latte, being the uh, professional, the, the being the professional that he is, took it a step further, and said, we don't need to think about who it is we want them to be. We need to think about first of all what it requires for them to even develop correctly. That's a gem right there, and I agree. Actually, that is true. We need to first think about. What what does it even take to raise a person properly? And so this is where the, the discussion begins. And, and I'm going to just walk you through the realization that I literally had like about an hour ago. I was driving around kind of, you know, in my solitude and, and, and it all just hit me. And I was like, whoa, like I need to talk about this. So let's start with the whole debate about raising our babies and whether or not we're raising them to be too soft or too hard. Let me just say this, right? I grew up in an angry household. I grew up being hit, um, (laughs) beat by my father and also my siblings. 
you know, and berated by by family members. And I will say rightfully so, at least in my my opinion, you know, because. Yeah, I, I did a lot of stupid things as a kid. And so I I inherited that style of raising people. I mean, I, I don't have kids, you know, but I'm still an adult and, you know, um, I would like to have kids. And sometimes you see the kid in people, you know, it's definitely in my friends. You know, I definitely took out a lot. I lashed out a lot of my anger in, to my friends sometimes and then even cousins and stuff like that. And, you know, because uh, basically what I'm saying is I, I learned my disciplinary skills from my angry household. And so I kind of grew up with a sort of aggressive, uh, militant approach to discipline. And a lot of people would say that physically disciplining our kids is beneficial. It's necessary to build character. And a lot of people, other people would say it's not necessary and it's actually very detrimental. And so it's got me to realize that there's this whole new way of thinking that's developing having to do with us raising our kids. And first and foremost, let's just say for sure, I think there is zero benefits to beating your kids. <laughs> I think there is zero benefits to beating your children and, and zero benefits to even hitting them. There is no there, there is no benefits to hitting a child. Any benefits that I got from being hit any benefits that I got from being beat, I had to rationalize and create later on as an adult. In the in the moment when I got hit and beat, there were no benefits. There were no there were no in, in encouraging, inspirational, motivational things running through my head like, yeah, I got beat. That means uh, you know, I'm building character. Like, no, when I got beat as a kid, it was traumatizing, it was hurtful. It, it caused anger within me that I would later lash out onto other people. So there were zero benefits. But now as an adult looking back, I have rationalized it and I have said to myself, you know what, I'm glad I got hit. And to be honest, I still am. I am still, but that's me personally. As an adult, I had to rationalize that. And not everybody does. Some people do the opposite they don't rationalize it and they can't make sense of it and they go fucking crazy and they hate their parents and they hate life and they go and do some wild shit luckily god gave me the heart and soul and mind that i have and i was able to rationalize it and say you know what i forgive my dad i love my dad and i'm happy i had the childhood that i did and i'm happy that i got disciplined in the way that i did because it made me who i am i can do that sure but the truth of the matter is, the scientific matter is, there is, there's zero benefit to hitting a child. There's no reason we should hit a child or a baby ever. Um, right? So, but for the longest time, to be honest, up until recently, literally up until about an hour ago, <laughs> I still believed that physically disciplining a child would be or could be beneficial to them and society because of my own experience but i'm kind of second guessing that now and we're going to get into it and i'll tell you why i'm second guessing that i don't know if i actually don't know if it's beneficial to hit our children you know i grew up in a mexican household you already know how enticing it is to believe that it's so enticing to believe that a kid all kid needs is just a good slap in the face a good belt to the ass. Un chanclatazo. You know? And it's but I think that's the anger in us that that arises as we get put into that position now and we're like, we're the adults now. Now I get to do the disciplining. I, I mean I it's in me. That anger is in me. Trust me, there's a lot about me y'all don't know. And one of them is that I actually have anger issues. And maybe that's a, st a video for another day. And my anger issues have gotten to, gotten me in a lot of trouble throughout my life. And it's something that I've been working on. 
But I'll tell you the truth, man. Some sometime I mean, for the long time, I believe you know if I ever have kids and they do some dumb shit, hell yeah, I'm gonna slap them across the face, you know. But is that truly how I feel, or is that just the anger in me from being a kid who got beat? So that's what I want to start with right there, right? It's like scientifically, obviously, there's no fucking reason to hit a kid. There's no benefits to hitting a child, hitting a baby. Now, an adult, it's a different story. I do believe that as an adult, if you step over the line, if you step over a boundary, you know, there there are certain circumstances in which getting your ass beat is justifiable. And for me, that's why I'm that's why I'm personally happy that I got disciplined the way I did because It set me up for the world that way in which when I became an adult, I knew like there's just I I understood that respect is earned. And if you disrespect people, there's a good chance you're going to get your ass beat. (laughs) But I'm starting to ask myself, are there better ways to come to that conclusion? Do we do we have to beat each other just to understand that? Or are there better ways to come to that conclusion, which is we should be respecting the life around us? But then there's the opposite, right? Where it's like, are we are we too soft in our approach? Are we are we softening the world too much for our babies and our kids? But again, we have to go back to the core of it all, as Mate said which is the requirements for proper development and he basically summed it up as you know proper love proper care proper attention and this one this is the one i think that gets most of us who come from a physically disciplined childhood the fourth one you know of course love care attention And then this fourth one being um, freedom of expression of all emotions. I think this is the one that gets a lot of us old schoolers. You know, we see kids lashing out and we see parents allowing them to lash out. It's okay, go ahead, you know, scream it out, whatever. That's what gets us like, what the fuck? Like my mom would never let me just scream in the Walmart. My dad would never let me just throw a tantrum. But Gabor Mate the expert says that an important requirement for proper development for a baby, a child, a human is freedom of expression of all emotions. And so that's where this debate really begins to have contention because the old schoolers, they discipline expression and they only allow expression for certain times and the new school way is like, no, just let kids express themselves when necessary for them. And so I'm sitting back thinking like, damn, okay, well, where's the middle ground? Because if we just beat our kids to death, they're going to grow up bitter with trauma, with anger. That's going to lead them down a, an entire life of trying to remedy those traumas. And not just the beating, but the neglect as well. The neglecting. But if we smother them with... If we smother them with affection, and if we don't create any boundaries, any, and if we don't create any habits of, bound, of self-discipline and boundaries for them then they're going to just become these codependent people who don't know how to face life as well. So there's got to be a middle ground. And this is the realization that I had. This is where the big profound moment for me was. And that is that we are even beginning to think about this. The profound realization that I had was that there is a massive shift in awareness for mental health happening 
And so to me, it's beautiful that we're even beginning to think about this. I don't think we've reached a proper way to to go about this. But the fact that we are even beginning on a global scale to start thinking about mental health, specifically with our babies and our children, is fucking amazing and beautiful. And it's by design and it's not a coincidence. Check this out, right? It's like a lot of us old schoolers would say, um, you know, things were better when we were more physically disciplined. Things were better when we had hardships. That's that's how the world got to be the way it is. But were they really? Were they really better back in the day? Or was that all that we knew? We are babies compared to the millions and billions of years that have happened. You know, we are children. The human race as a whole, the modern human race as a whole, are children in the grand scheme of what we are meant to become. Not that long ago, we were fucking cavemen. So were the hard times really better or was that all that we knew? We've only now begun to get to the place where we can create a comfortable, luxurious life. Prior to the modern times, life was rough, life was tough, but that's all we knew and that's all we had. And before then, before then, life was straight up fucking primal life was straight up survival of the fittest and so although the old schoolers of the early industrial age and the agricultural ages would like to say that you know um we're standing on the shoulders of all the work they did well guess what they're standing on the shoulders of all the work that the cavemen did right i obviously you know there was the Atlantean age, the, the prior Atlantean age, but I don't believe that we were a part of that. I, I believe that the Atlantean age belonged to a whole different humanoid civilization and species, right? The Anunnaki, ancient aliens, all that shit. They survived, created us, and so we, came, we technically came out of the caveman era. Um, and whatever Anunnaki's bloodlines that live among us, came out of the Atlantean fall so they also came through a, a, a cataclysm a devastation and so whether whether you come from the Atlantean lineage or you come from the earthly caveman lineage for lack of better words we both began with a hardship at the onset of the modern historical age and so that's all we knew all we had was hardship but did we want that? Was that really better? Or was that all we had? I think that's all we fucking had. That's all we had to deal with. And being the, the resilient, beautiful, miraculous beings we are, who always find a way, we took that and slowly brought ourselves back up to the intellectual height that we are at today. And check this out. This is what I realized too. So... In order to understand the macro, you have to understand the micro and vice versa. And looking at the micro allows you to understand the macro. And I have this new perspective on the Bible now. This new perspective on the story of the Garden of Eden. And that's why I love the Bible, man. Y'all know that I'm heretical, (laughs) considered heretical because of the work that I do in deconstructing religion. But it's funny because I actually live a lot of my life based on the morals that come out of Christianity. You know, I'm default Christian. And I love the Bible. I love the Bible because of a lot of its philosophical and moralistic teachings. You know, some of it. But I love it too because it's a, it's a piece of work, a piece of human literature that, that's quantum. It's like there's not only one way to interpret it or look at it. It's quantum. There's so, there's so many ways to look at it. And it's such a beautifully humanistic piece of work, dude, that, just, I, that I always come back to. And so check this out, right? 
just as humans, our relationship with our fathers and our mothers is tantamount to how we will develop as, as a person. And so as a human race, our relationship with our divine mother and father is tantamount to how we are going to develop as a race. And it's interesting, first of all, how we aren't even taught about the mother in religion. The whole divine feminine is fucking left out. We are all motherless to begin with. And to be honest, I had no intention to speaking about that in this video. That just came to me right now. Smacked my plant back here as I said that. This is Plantita, by the way. I've had her for about four years. Growing strong. She's been with she's been through a lot with me. Seen me grow. <laughs> I've seen her grow and she's seen me grow. Um yeah, so that's for one, dude. We we are mother, we are div, we are divinely motherless children. Right? And that's just one thing. But let's get to the father. The in the very beginning when we're as we are created, after we are created, Adam and Eve through the Adam and Eve story, our father abandons us. Our father literally kicks us out of the Garden of Eden and says, you are an idiot. Get out of here. I don't want to see you. You have to go struggle for the rest of your life. How fucking traumatizing would that be? We are literally children in the eyes of God, naked in the eyes of God. And now have to clothe ourselves because we and, and leave our home and go become... You know, and go fend for ourselves because we made a mistake. Our father has turned our his it's his back on us. And I'm not saying that to like condemn God and say Christianity's bad. I'm just looking at this with a new perspective now because the fact of the matter is religion's just religion, man. It's just a way to 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 cope with being here. But we're still here. We're we're here in the flesh having to deal with real life problems and so it's it's just funny to me it's ironic and interesting how the bible right on the at the onset of humanity's creation we undergo a huge schism and trauma between ourselves and our father and it's interesting how it comes full circle and our father I mean, I don't know. It's weird. Our father literally comes and kills our brother Jesus, who's God. I don't know. I don't want to get into all that, but it's just funny how it comes full circle. And the whole purpose of life is to reconnect with our father, build, re reconnect and, and reprimand that trauma. Um, right. I mean, that's kind of funny. If we're all children of God, and is is Jesus our brother? <laughs> Jesus is our brother. I don't know. It's that, that whole, that's a whole different thing. But what I'm getting at is family is fucking important, man. Family is important. And how we treat each other is important. And the, life starts at home. And it's interesting that as a human race, we don't have a divine mother. And as a human race, our father literally fucking kicked us out of the house because we made one mistake. And so the world is in trauma. The world needs the mother and father again. And so I'm just sitting in my in my car in my in the truck, driving under the moonlight right now, listening to this, going through this profound realization. Like, wow, we are so traumatized as a human race, and it's we're so fucked up as a human race. Like we. We beat our children. I mean, beating our children is one thing. Motherfuckers have been sacrificing their kids to Moloch for millennia. We're so fucked in the head. And so that's why I'm now thinking to myself, like, maybe it's not a good thing to hit our kids. <laughs> wow, there's a novel idea. But it's also not okay to smother them. With affection. 
right? We need to find a way to allow them to develop to, to develop correctly. And so this is where it ties into with the age of Aquarius, right? Because they're saying that we've some people are saying we've officially entered, we're entering, I don't know, but we're heading there. And so what I realize is as a human race, we're still developing. And the fact that we're starting to think about mental health so much shows to me a huge step of improvement because now we're realizing like, hey, man, maybe we don't want to live like hard and rigid lives where everything's fucked up and we just pass on trauma to our kids. Maybe we, we do want to live in a world where there's more love and compassion, <laughs> right? So in order for a child to grow correctly, properly they need love care attention freedom of expression and we should be giving children that think about it how fucked up are we that we rob children and babies of that babies are the most precious thing in the fucking universe We've become so desensitized. Babies and children are the most sacred and precious thing there could ever be. Babies of all creation. They deserve that. They deserve the love, the affection, the care, the freedom of expression. They deserve that. And it's if it's fucked up, we don't give them that. They, Babies are a shining light. Miracles. And every time we traumatize them with a little bit of neglect, with with a little bit of physical discipline, it's like throwing a heavy, damp blanket onto them. And little by little, we're just stopping their light from coming through, darkening their light and to the point where they're so suffocated with trauma, so suffocated with the dampening blankets, stopping their life from coming through, that they just die, either literally or figuratively. And so imagine in a, what would happen in a world where we give babies the proper requirements needed for healthy development. I mean, really stop and think about this. The world was has been so hard for so long. And shout out to all the men and women who endured that. The men and women who endured all of the hard years of life. The men and women who endured the harsh centuries and millennia of life on earth prior to to the comfortable modern ages deserve respect and admiration and veneration because they laid the groundwork for us to now create comfortable lives where love and compassion is accessible and think about this right it's like people say no we need physical discipline because there's war out there and there's we need to be ready for war man war only exists because we don't have fucking compassion war only exists because we don't have compassion and warlords exist because they're fucking psychopaths who probably at some point in their development underwent traumas that they now had to remedy with the obsession of murdering people. So, again, Gabor Mate says, the, the, the core of addiction is trauma, which is a lack of love and compassion. And I know that to be true in my life. And if you've ever struggled with any substances I want you to ask yourself why did you start to spiral down with these substances I'm sure if you sit there long enough and think about it it'll it'll always come back to some 
memory, some experience in which you were neglected, in which you were hurt, which caused a breakage in your development, which you've now had to remedy with some sort of temporary fix. And look, life is still going to be hard because nature is hard. And the process of building, you know, the process of building life is hard. So there's, there will still be hardships and obstacles in life, but we don't have to make our lives harder by being self-destructive. If I look back in my life, most of the hardships I've endured, not all of them, but most of them have come through my own self-destructive behavior. Now, multiply that by the entire world who who are also self-destructive, right? We're all self-destructive. We are one family. Everybody's always thinking about just themselves and their family, their little communities. But we all exist together, man. Like everything we do is going to affect the rest of the world. And so we're all walking around being self-destructive and fucked up to one another and to ourselves. And we don't think that's not, that's, that's not going to cause a ripple effect that will result in wars, in crime, in murder, and all these other things. And so it, it all starts with how we start to, how we raise our children. The next generation's are going to define the human race. The next generations are going to lead us either into a caring, compassionate Aquarian age or lead us into de decimation. And so this is what's wonderful about this whole mental health awareness thing because, yes, although there may be some sort of nefarious agenda with wanting to weaken our men and women. I think there's also a, a duality here. And the other side of that is that no, we've been fucking enduring just hardships from our caveman days through our industrial agricultural ages up until now and have barely begun to be able to create the beginnings of what could be a very amazing, very amazing civilization here on earth centered around intellectual, technological advancements that come from a caring and compassionate people. And it makes sense because we are we are entering the Aquarian age. We're coming back to the golden age. So it makes sense that we are starting to really analyze ourselves as a human race and say, hey, maybe we don't want to lead these hard lives. Maybe we do want to be more loving. And so we are we are witnessing right now in real time the very beginnings of what is going to be a golden age. I don't think I don't think I'll live to see it. I don't think we any of us will live to see it. But if we do our part to start to heal ourselves, heal our traumas, and start to energetically exude that and, and communally and, and culturally express that among each other, I think we will slowly start to create the foundation for a future generation to inherit that and build what will once what will be a golden Aquarian age once again in which not only we are advanced technologically but we are advanced emotionally. We have technology now. Fucking shit, dude. We've got anti-gravitational technology and all this stuff now but look what we're doing with it. Everything we fucking make it's like, well, uh, how can we turn this into a weapon? You know, like we've got the internet. We can interconnect everybody on the in the around the world. Uh, I know. Let's spy on everybody. 
It's so dumb, dude. Everything we do either gets weaponized or sexualized. This is how fucked up we are. But it's no coincidence that we're beginning to think about mental health. Because a part of us, a part of the human soul, the collective soul, is beginning to wake up. It's beginning to wake up. And I think we're going to find that happy medium between self-discipline and um, compassion. Right? A true warrior is somebody who can go to war, but somebody who can also provide peace. You're only good if you're capable of both evil and good. You're not good if you can only follow orders. And so there's a happy medium. And look, this is coming from a motherfucking blue-collar man. This is coming from a hard-working man. I am self-made. I am a self-made business owner, plumber. Okay, you should see my hands. All right, you can't really see them right now, but... You should see these fuckers in the light in real life. A lot of scars. I know this might so some people out there it may sound like I'm getting soft or something. I don't know, but trust me, this is coming from a motherfucker who's lived a hard life. I'm not a I'm not no gangster, nothing like that. But I've lived a hard, laborious life. And look, yes, I've had my fair share of run-ins out there in the streets. Definitely was a hoodlum growing up. A little thug, you could even say. But the but the, the hardships in life for me didn't come from running the streets. That was self-destruction. I, I brought stupidity in my life. You know, I brought I brought obstacles in my life because of my stupidity on the streets but the hardships for me <clears throat> have come from doing what's right yeah one of my favorite rappers benefit said um the working man is rugged instead i forgot what the other line was but he was basically saying that you know everybody oh yeah he says everybody worships the thug and then dead the working man is rugged instead. So look, I understand, like, I understand self-discipline. I understand having to be strong. And of course, in life, it does take resilience and resistance to, oh, I would say, you know, yeah, in life, it does take resilience to build character to become strong right like even like even that's how muscles work you need to push muscles to their limits so i understand that aspect but i think there's a <laughs> there's a stark difference to building character with resilience training with disciplinary training and simply just beating our kids because they didn't throw the trash out you know so it's like i'm just starting to understand is all i'm saying i'm starting to understand that there is a massive awareness happening right now within the human family having to do with mental health. And that massive awareness is a beautiful indication that we are growing as a species. And that we are growing as a species towards another Aquarian age. Because what would the Aquarian age be? Nothing other than a highly developed age where love reigns supreme. Bro, what vibration is higher than love? We are coming out of the fucking depths of hell. I mean, Hitler, bro? What the fuck was that? You know? Dude, children working in factories? And look, we're not by any means perfect today. We've got, we got a lot of work to do. But please understand, you are witnessing not just history, my people. This isn't just some little thing in history like 
oh yeah, back in twenty in, in the in the twenty twenties, you know, mental health became a big thing. No, no, no. Understand, you are witnessing celestial history right now. Celestial fucking history. I'm talking Eastern Island heads sticking out the ground. We don't know who the fuck built these history. I'm talking about there's a big ass thing called the Pyramid of Giza that we still cannot explain history. We are witnessing the beginning. Oh my God, I got the chills right now. We are witnessing the beginning of, of 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 an Aquarian age. Very soon, within the grand scheme of time, there's going to be a generation born on this earth that's going to take this motherfucker back in the name of love, in the name of compassion. But they're going to be strong warriors as well. We have to start thinking about mental health, physical health. There's no fucking way we can ever enter an Aquarian age without love. There's no way we can enter the Aquarian age without having strengthened mind and bodies. It's no wonder this is happening right now. So again, man, and it's it's no wonder that my last book, The Crystal Lattice Mind Illusion, happened the way it did. It's crazy, man. There's something happening. Like, for example, I was just... Well, before I say this, let me get back to the Crystal Lattice thing because I feel like that was just random. But there's a reason I just said that because that book was random to me. I was not planning on writing that book. And for those of you who do not know, my last book, The Crystal Lattice Mind Illusion, has to do with the con- with consciousness, the body, the body and mind connection, the simulation theory, and God, and, and, and self-healing. Dude, that all of that came randomly. And after after I started to attend these like self-healing ceremonies and all kinds of other uh experiences last year, and now now I, I actually have my own small self-healing organization and I'm partnered up with amazing, beautiful people who Ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> my money phone just went off. A business phone um but now i'm partnered with an amazing beautiful team of other guides and facilitators who have the same goal of of not just being able to come together as a community and heal each other and ourselves but to practice this and go out and heal the world you know and so my book the crystal lattice mind illusion teaches you what the mind is, what the body is, how they're connected, and how we can utilize them to, to, to heal and heal others. And so it's not a coincidence. And so what I was going to say is, I was listening to another podcast earlier. I forgot the name of it, but they had Wes Watson on there. And I thoroughly enjoy listening to any of Wes Watson's work. For those of you who don't know, Wes Watson um, is is basically... He's a coach, also a motivational speaker, a life coach and motivational speaker. And he's got a crazy message, an amazing message. And he's very vulgar in his message, which I love. I resonate with vulgarity. And that's a whole nother thing, you know, because I come from basically the streets. Um, and he's he's actually from my county, from North County, San Diego. And he's got a, a gnarly life story. You know, went to prison. He was he was he was a real, you know, criminal <laughs> at at one point. Went to prison for doing some real criminal stuff, but was able to turn his life around, and now makes a lot of money. I mean, well over six figures a month. But it's not about the money with him, which is what I really like and admire. With him, it's about the message. And the message is changing your life from within. And in the episode I was listening to today, he admitted that he he, he does believe in a higher power. That's, that's always been known about him. But recently, he started to call that higher power God. And he doesn't know why. He said, I don't even know why. I've never called it God before. I've just always just called it a higher power or universe or life. 
but recently I've just started to call it God. And that's not a coincidence. I don't think that's a coincidence, man. There's a lot of people on earth who are starting to wake up to this higher calling. Something's happening. We are shifting. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful to be here, man. It's beautiful to be here. People like Wes Watson will go down in celestial history as prophets. You know, as prophets. Me, I don't know. I'm just I just view myself as a scribe more than anything, you know? Kind of a Yeah, I'm just here observing it, reporting it. I don't know how I will go down in celestial history. I don't know what God plans to write about me later on in the book of life. But we all play our part. We all play our part. And it's just amazing to see this unfolding. So, should you hit your kids? I mean, obviously no. But how do we discipline them with the same result? How how can we get our, our kids to feel the same effects as if they were hit? <laughs> I don't even know how to word that. But you know what I'm saying? It's like children do need to be disciplined. But they also need freedom of expression. Man, oh man, I mean, I'm not a parent, so I, I know out there there's there's nothing more abhorrent for a parent than somebody who doesn't have kids to tell them how to raise their children. I get that, but I'm a human being, and I have young people in my family, and I'm a I'm a father figure to to many people out there. I would assume, you know, I've been told that, actually, so. Um, we are developing man we're still developing and it's awesome to see that we are starting to develop and blossom into what are the beginning stages of an Aquarian civilization who leads with compassion who leads with intellectual understanding it's going to take a lot though man it's going to take a lot because there are a lot of babies out there in the world. A lot of adult babies. A lot of adult babies out there crying and screaming and flailing their arms and all of that nonsense. And so as adults, we have to like baby our, our own. You know, we, we have to find ways to heal those traumas inside of us together so that we can just stop. Stop the madness, bro. It's such a pipe dream, though. It's such a pipe dream. And it's no wonder that the psychopathic dark lords just come to the easy conclusion of extermination. Like, well, there's way too many of them, and they all have way too many needs, so let's just kill them all, and then we can kind of start with a smaller amount. Like, I get that, too, to be honest. I totally get that. Like, it would just be easier to just fucking wipe half of the fucking earth off. You know, it would be easy to wipe half of the population off the face of the earth and just be like, all right, cool. Now we got something easier to deal with. But unfortunately, that's just psychopathic and crazy. And it's not its not our position to play God like that. So we have to deal with the harder option. And the harder option is the obstacle that's going to lead to the resilience and profound compassion necessary to even take on such a complex situation as the planet earth and it all starts at home man like check this out like growing up as a kid it was it wasn't normal for us to say i love you in my family it was wild for like ever growing up as a kid me and my siblings never said i love you Rarely said I love you to my parents. Well, I said I love you to my mom a lot. My dad would never say I love you. To this day, I don't even I can't even count more than maybe once. I don't, I don't even remember the last time my dad my dad said I love you to me. It's okay. Like that's a whole topic for another day. You know, I mean, we have a great relationship, me and my dad, my mom. But 
I did grow up in a home where saying I love you was awkward and we never really said it. And me and my siblings never really said it. I don't want to take credit, but I do feel like I was the one who kind of broke that. Especially now, like, I, 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 I kind of feel like I'm the one who broke that tradition and just started saying it. I don't even remember when that happened, but I just started saying it like, fuck it, dude. Like, who cares if it's embarrassing? Like, I just started saying I love you at the end of a phone call or when I'm leaving. And then it kind of ca- caught on and we all say it now, except for, except for my dad. But if that's how fucking broken we are. Like, I, we couldn't even say I love you. And we're just one family. Imagine the world, how fucked up everything is, how fucked up everybody is. And that's why I always say I love you to all of you. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I'm always like, hey, well, I love y'all. You know, have a great time because I fucking do love you guys and gals. I love y'all. Doesn't mean I'm going to let you borrow 50 bucks every time you ask for it. But I love you. You know, so. Anyways, that was just kind of my strange realization that I had. We are developing into the Aquarian age and it's being born through this mass awareness of a need for compassion. What do y'all think, man? Am I crazy? Am I going soft? Is Esoteric Eddie going soft? Fuck that. No hugs for anybody. You're all getting kicks in the ass. (laughs) Nah, man. Look, I'm a hard motherfucker like I told you. Hard motherfucker, dude. But I guess I'm I'm a little softy on the inside. Nah, I'm 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 very affectionate though. Like I'm very affectionate if you get to know me and Um it's just the world made me hard. The world made me cold. But uh yeah man. I love y'all. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and and uh give those babies the hugs and attention they need and if i don't know let's don't listen to me listen to gabor mate the psychological latte that's what they need man they need freedom of expression they need to be able to feel their emotions so that when they grow up they're not all pent up and aggressive and need to go fucking drink all weekend and then go fuck everything and You know, and like, no, because they got the love they needed, the attention they needed. You know, I don't believe that if we let kids express themselves that they're going to grow up to be softies. I don't know what this softy thing is, though. It's kind of gnarly. Like, it is uh, is an issue. But I think it comes from, this is just my perspective. I think the whole softy thing doesn't come from us allowing kids to, to cry. Okay, I don't think a person's going to grow up to be a soft motherfucker just because they cried when they were younger. We've all cried when we were younger. That didn't make us weak people. Um, you know, I think this whole issue and epidemic of children being weaker and not being able to handle life doesn't have to do with the fact that we... Uh, smother them with affection or allow them to cry their heart out i think it comes from the fact that we aren't setting good examples for them i think it comes from the fact that we're being lazy as adults and we're not applying the knowledge we have for them we're being lazy letting your child sit there endlessly on a tablet is is different than allowing them freedom of expression. If your child is sad because their friend is moving away and, and all they want to do is cry all day about it, that's different than them coming home saying, um, I don't want to do any homework. I just want to sit on my tablet all day long or whatever. You know, it's like, those are two different things. That And it all comes from not just trauma, but stress also. This is another thing that Gabor Mate talks about, which is stress. 
stretch, and I've heard this on many other recovery and addiction podcasts that I've been listening to, stress is another main reason why people turn to addictions and bad habits. Because we're trying to find a way, we're trying to find a way to deal with our stress. And so when your child comes home distraught, we need to uh, differentiate whether this stress they're going through is simply the stress of life or the stress of an experience. I think there's a difference, right? The stress of an experience is, is a unique thing. Like, again, their, their friend moving away or their dog dying. That's the stress of a unique experience. But the stress of life, you know, having to wake up and go to school and, you know, just the stress of life is is dealing with the mundane, rigid um, routines. And so just because we got to find we got to teach them how to deal with that sitting on your on their tablets, watching fucking <laughs> I don't know, doo-doo shark, whatever it's called, is not a fucking healthy way of dealing with stress, dude. That's what we call doom scrolling. That's what us adults call doom scrolling. How many of you sit there and doom scroll for fucking hours when you should be washing your dishes, doing your laundry, calling your mom or whatever? So again, I think there's a difference between allowing children the freedom of expression, crying their heart out, laughing their heart out, and just allowing them to do whatever they want and not providing them examples on how to build a life of self-discipline that's where it all that's where the softness is coming from that's where their inability to deal with life is coming from not from them crying their heart out not from them laughing their hearts out at church but coming from the fact that we aren't teaching them how to deal with stress. Teaching them shit, man. How many of you are actually taking the time to teach your kids, you know, I don't know, how to do things, how these things work, what this is, what that is. That, I believe, is the the, the causation of a weak and soft generation. Because if you, I mean, think about it. What made what's made what made us strong? What made us strong as as a, as a generation? And look, I'm I'm 29 going on 30s. I was born in '94, so you know I'm like the last of the real people, if you will. But what made us and and the previous generation strong is that we went outside. We were out there learning shit, out there falling down. So if if your kids don't want to do that with their friends, because all of them are part of the same generation that just wants to play video games, well, now you got to be the one to go out there. You know, it was just normal for us. It was normal for me and my friends to want to go outside and go fall down and go scrape ourselves and go blow shit up, you know? <laughs> that was normal for us. It's not normal for kids today. So now we have to do, parents have to do the, the extra work. Back then, parents didn't have to do shit, literally didn't have to do shit. You know, our parents, we were, we ran out the house, our parents... You know, all they had to do was say, as soon as the streetlights come on, come back home. You know, and that was a whole nother problem in itself, which caught, which gave us too much freedom. We had way too much fucking freedom, and that created maniacal motherfuckers, you know? But it's okay, right? It's like we're always trying to get the dials right. But anyway, what I'm saying is, back then, our parents didn't have to do much. Because as kids, we already naturally wanted to go out and experience life shit you know what i mean it was stealing our parents car keys when they were sleeping and all that you know back then we wanted to go out and experience life and so we learned head on how difficult life can be and that kind of prepared us but these days are different kids don't have that innate drive they, they'd rather i don't know they'd rather just stay in and and be introverts and play their their video games and stuff or whatever and i don't even know how much of that is true everybody just says that shit i don't know but i do see it in some of my younger family members. So we have to go out of our way as adults and go out there with them and and allow them those experiences. Anyways, um, yeah, homies, I'm working on a lot of stuff, a lot of things happening behind the scenes. I don't know how many of you heard me say in a recent video that I'm working on a podcast version 
uh, or I'm working on a podcast segment for this channel. I'm still working on that. Unfortunately, one of my hard drives gave out on me, which had the first few episodes on there. So I'm redefining what I'm going to do with it. But hopefully in February, the first couple episodes of my podcast segment will be out in which I will be interviewing family, friends, strangers, and occasionally special guests. Um, other than that, I'm just going to keep doing me. Make sure to keep in touch. And please send me emails, man. I need some more Thursday Q&As. I didn't have many last year. I want more Thursday Q&As. Hit me up. Tell me your darkest secrets. Um, I'll keep it anonymous. Whatever. Ask me questions. Whatever you want to do. Email me. Tell me some shit. I want to I wanna, uh, read some emails. I've got some already that I got to go through. Um, but hit me the fuck up, man. Hope y'all are doing good. I love you. Peace.